Well, thank you, Simon. You're amazing. Um, I'm going to bring on now uh, Patrick, uh, who also narrates the um, second episode, uh, to introduce the uh, cast of what was then called Far East Orlando. Oh my gosh, my heart's beating. It's been so long. <laughs> Uh, Far East Orlando, pilot episode, written by Nanash Kahan, directed by Lynn Shelton, based on the memoir Fresh Off the Boat by Eddie Wong. Cast list, Lewis, played by Randall Park, Jessica, played by Constance Wu, Eddie, played by Hudson Yang, Emery, played by Forrest Wheeler, Evan, played by Ian Chen. Fade in, interior room, day. Close-ups of someone putting on a big-ass watch, gold neck chain, Orlando magic hat, starter jacket, cut wide to reveal all the bling is on Eddie Wong. He slides on pimp shades, pulls open a curtain, and we realize interior department store continuous. He's in the dressing room of a department store. He swaggers over to his mom, Jessica, and younger brothers, Emery and Evan. Mom, check it. Fresh as hell, right? Eddie, don't say hell. She also said butthole in the car. Shut up, Evan, you little Chinese narc. Mom, Eddie told me to shut Eddie, up. don't talk about holes. Where's Emery? I like your jewelry. It's not jewelry, it's bling. Your watch is really big. <laughs> yeah, so I can tell people when it's time to check themselves. Please, Mom, can I get this? Uh, how much is it? She reaches to check a price tag dangling off his jacket. Exterior department store. Minutes later, the Wong family walks out of the store. Eddie wears a shitty dinosaur t-shirt and dorky shorts. Super bummed. You think money falls from the sky like rain? That hat costs more than your grandfather's house. You said I could have new clothes when we moved to Orlando. Your dinosaur t-shirt is almost new. And Tyrannosaur is cool. That'll be fine. We're not made for money. What the hell? Mom, don't say hell. Oh, shut up, Evan. And let go of me, sweaty hand. What are you so nervous about? End cold open. Act one, establishing Orlando 1994 montage. Big Papa plays as we see white Southern rednecks, Dis Disney World tourists, the boy band explosion, Orlando magic shack, all of which leads us to interior Dodge Caravan. Eddie sitting in the back seat, headphones on. B.I.G. still playing in his ears. Eddie looks over at his family. His dad, Lewis, and Evan sing along to something we can't hear. Emery is asleep. Jessica stares out the window. Grandma Wong munches on a bag of combos. Eddie takes off his headphones and is hit with the musical opposite of B.I.G. Ace of Bases, The Sign. I, I saw, saw the sign, sign and, and it opened, opened up my eyes. I saw, saw the sign. sign. God, stop it. Turn off the radio. Eddie, I know you're not excited to leave DC, but you're gonna love Orlando. I've been there for six months setting up the restaurant and I've grown to love it like the daughter we wished Evan had been. I don't know why we have to move. Why couldn't you keep going back and forth between Orlando and DC? Because I don't want to work for your mom's brother selling furniture for the rest of my life. Besides, we're family, we belong together. Your father's right. That's why we left Chinatown in D.C., left our family and friends to come here. Exactly. Left everything we know to come to a place where we know nothing and the humanity is not good for my hair. Right, okay. And for what? So your father can open a cowboy restaurant. Okay, it's called Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, and I can't wait for you all to see it. It's beautiful. It's big, brown, and beautiful. Like Shaq? Exactly like Shaq. I blame myself. I knew it was a bad omen when I saw that squirrel eat her babies on my wedding day. Exterior, cul-de-sac, afternoon. <laughs> Moving men walk boxes into the house. Eddie and Emery stand on the lawn, surveying their new neighborhood. A lot of white folks here. Not like back in DC. The only white people we saw there were lost tourists. Exterior, Chinatown, Washington DC, flashback. Eddie and Emery sit on the stoop of a townhouse. A white tourist couple walks by, map unfolded, loaded down with cameras. They stop and turns to the boys. White house? White house? Eddie and Emery look at each other. Exterior cul-de-sac, back to scene. Jessica walks up to the boys. The humidity is already affecting her hair in a <sighs> negative way. You boys just gonna stand there or pick up a box and help? Mom, is there a Chinatown in Orlando? Jessica points to their house. You're looking at it. A pack of white women rollerblade up. 
Hi, welcome to the neighborhood. I'm Deidre, that's Amanda, that's Samantha, that's Lisa, that's Carol Joan. Welcome. Thank you, white woman, white woman, and white woman. I'm Jessica. Boy, stay close. Mommy might be in a fight. I got I Carol Joan. Joan. Ooh, uh, I was expecting something more exotic, but I love the name Jessica. I had a sorority sister with that name. She died in a riptide accident. We dedicated a section of the highway to her. Where are y'all from? My parents were born in Taiwan, but my brothers and I are born in DC. A black Corvette pulls into a driveway. Marvin drives with Honey in the back seat, uh, in the passenger seat. She wears a short tennis dress. Camp. I don't roll with girls in dresses. I like it when they look regular. You also sleep with a nightlight. That's Marvin and his second wife, Honey. She used to be his dental hygienist, but wound up cleaning more than teeth. I heard she used to give tug jobs to the talking heads. I, um, are you all sisters? Anywho, we've got a motor. We go rollerblading every day. If you'd like to join us, give us a holler. They rollerblade off. Jessica turns to the boys. Hmm, the loudest one seems to be their queen. So, who's hungry? Interior Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, late afternoon. Over the top, all lassoes and canteens. Lewis wheels grandma into her wheelchair through, the rest of the family follows. And the cactuses are planted in old spittoons. I wanted it to look authentic like the real Wild West. <laughs> the waiters used to wear spurs, but they were right at Achilles level, so we switched to black Reeboks. Right, Nancy? I got sliced up pretty bad. No. Eddie's POV, dead bears and a jackalope head are mounted on the walls. Dude, where the hell are we? I don't think Shaq eats here. Were there bears in the Old West? Grandma stares at the jackalope head. Ni tai man la. A subtitle reads, you were too slow. Where are all the customers? Uh, well, technically we're uh, still in our soft opening. <laughs> Louis, there's hardly anyone here. And that table is only drinking water. Hey, why you bitches not drink beer? Uh, the restaurant is doing well, okay, but not as well as it could be. Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't want to give you another reason not to move here. I should have married Oscar Chow. He has three dry cleaning stores. Okay. Oscar Chow is crazy gay. And a steakhouse down here should be very successful. I just have to figure out why people aren't coming. Maybe it's the food. No, it's not the food. The food's perfect. Hector's a genius. He gives a thumbs up to Hector, who's working the grill in the kitchen. He's all choloed out with a big neck tattoo of a serpent choking a mouse next to the word muerte. Hector gives a sincerely enthusiastic thumbs up back. Interior, Wong Kitchen, next morning. Jessica packs lunch for the boys who eat breakfast. Her hair is not doing well. Eddie, wearing a notorious B.I.G. t-shirt, looks bummed. Evan turns to Emery. Can I sit next to you on the bus? Sure, if you want. Me and Emery are going to sit next to each other on the bus. You're on a different bus because you go to a different school, so I don't know who you're going to sit next to. Definitely not Emery, though. He'll be next to me. Shut up, Evan. Mom, why do you have to start school on a Wednesday? Why can't we wait until Monday? Why wait? You need to go to school so you could go to college so you can make lots of money. All you care about is money. You're all about the eggs. I am all about the eggs. Eddie, I'm going to tell you this only once. Money is everything. Anyone who says different is poor. Come on, you'll miss your bus. She hands them their lunches and looks Eddie in the eye. I want you all to be polite, respectful, and don't make waves. Why were you only looking at me? What? I'm talking to all of you. Mom, dude, you were looking right at me. Jessica forces herself to look at Evan and Emery, who looks so sweet. She looks back at Eddie. Okay, I was talking to you. Why do all your t-shirts have black men on them? It's a Torius B.I.G. Me and him are both dudes with mad dreams. Just trying to get them respect in the game. Just trying to get a nut. An excited Lewis enters in undershirt and hairnet. Jessica, I figured it out. Dad, how can we have to start school on a Wednesday? That's a great question. Go to school. Go, go, go on. Go, 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 go. Okay. I was blow drying my hair and I figured it out. How the restaurant can attract bigger crowds. How? I need to hire a white host. Instead of people coming in and seeing a Chinese face and saying, huh? I thought this was an old West steakhouse. They see a white face and say, oh, hello, white friend. I am comfortable. 
Or they say, hello, white friend. Why are those other white friends taking your equipment? Oh, they're closing this place and opening up a lady foot locker? Makes sense. See, exactly, not welcoming. That's why no to your face and yes to a white face. Interior middle school, classroom morning. A school bell rings and we're in a classroom. Eddie stands next to the teacher, Mrs. Uveda. A sea of white faces stare back at him. Class, I'd like to introduce a new student. I know it's a little unorthodox, being a Wednesday and all, but I'd like to I'd like you all to give a warm Abraham Lincoln Middle School welcome to who Angie Ye Call me Eddie. Call me Eddie. Interior, middle school, cafeteria lunch. Eddie walks past kids eating, talking, laughing. We also spot several kids eating lunchables. He stops at a table where one kid, Walter, sits. Walter wears a plastic laminated hall monitor badge around his neck. Sup? Cool if I sit? No. Fine, but don't try to talk to me. I don't like kids. My best friend is a 40-year-old man. Eddie sits. He takes his Tupperware container out when a blonde kid who looks like his name would be probably Brock calls out. Yo, yo, Chinese kid. You're in my homeroom. Uh, what's your name again? Something Chinese? My name's Eddie. Eddie, you into B.E.G.? Oh, yeah, man, he's sick. Uh, I bought Ready to Die the day it came out. I went as a baby from that album cover for Halloween. Yo, come on, come come sit with us. Yeah? Okay, man, cool. A white dude and an Asian dude bonding over a black dude, and I'm stuck here in no man's land. Eddie grabs his stuff and moves over to the new table. What's up? I'm Eddie. Hey, dude. Eddie. All the kids ad lib greetings back. For the first time, it seems like Orlando might not be that bad. And then he takes the top of his Tupperware off. Probably Brock recoils. Oh, what's that? Uh, this, it's Penny for my mom. Oh, gross. That stinks. It's worms. Ying Ming is eating worms. Dude, get out of here. Go. Red faced, Eddie walks back over to Walter's table, laughter spreading through the cafeteria. Oh, it didn't go well. The white people didn't welcome you with open arms? What? Sit elsewhere, B.I.G. Eddie picks up his stuff and slumps off. End of Act 1. Act 2. Exterior, cul-de-sac, day. The white women rollerblade down the street. One has a small dog on a leash. In the middle of the, uh, in the, middle of the pack is Jessica, struggling not to fall and break her neck. I can't believe Jake slept with Brittany. He knew Palmer Woodward was using her as a part of a plot to destroy him and help Amanda take controlling interest of Melville's place. Right, Jessica? Yes, all of those white people sound like they're making mistakes. Oh, the school bus is here. Let's see how my boy's day was. Okay, sugar, bye. Uh, take picket fences tonight, we'll discuss tomorrow. The women blade off as Eddie approaches. How was- They said my lunch smelled. Smelled delicious. No, they said it stank, Mom. I'd eat behind the gym where the janitor flies his kite. Exterior. Abraham Lincoln Middle School. Gym. Flashback. Eddie sits against a wall eating his Chinese lunch as a janitor flies a kite. This is nice. Exterior cul-de-sac. Back to scene. Eddie and Jessica are as we left them. Well, those kids just don't know, that's all. It takes time to get used to something different. I hate it here. I want to go back to D.C. Eddie, that's not possible. We're here now and we all have to make the best of it. Like I'm doing with these neighborhood women. You think I like pretending Carol Joan isn't carrying a baggie of dog poops in her hand? No, I don't. We all see them in there, rolling around. But I'm trying and you have to try too. You're never on my side. Eddie storms off towards the house. Eddie, wait. What is Melrose Place? Another bus pulls up and Emery and Evan get off. Emery holds hands with a cute 11-year-old girl, Kim. Mom, this is my girlfriend, Kim. Hi, Mrs. Wong. I'm gonna walk her home, okay? Bye, Mrs. Wong. They walk off. Evan looks at his mom. I have so much to tell you. Interior Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, evening. Lewis looks at a resume as he interviews Mitch. So, uh, Mitch, where are you from? Uh, here in Orlando. Born and raised. Oh, I love Orlando. It's feisty. It's a nighttime town in a daytime dress. Jessica enters. Uh, Jessica, what are you doing here? I went rollerblading with Samantha in Alabama, and I realized white people have their own secret code. So maybe you're right. Hiring one could help the restaurant. It just has to be the right white. 
We are not a couple of country bumpkins. Excuse me? You think you can come in here and just do whatever you want and eat food for free and waste napkins? Take it easy. I don't like his for his eyebrows and he has a tricky forehead. How many girls have you gotten pregnant? Oh my God. Yeah, I've never gotten any girls pregnant. I have three young boys. Are we going to have a problem? No, I love boys. As friends, I am friends with boys. Like friend, boys, boys who are, sorry, my English isn't so good. Uh, can I have some water? Interior, Marvin and Honey House, night. Marvin and the Wongs, minus grandma, sit at the table. The boys stare at Honey, who wears ridiculously tight pants as she sets down food. Jessica tries to tame her hair with bobby pins and failed. Oh, sorry. My hair and Orlando are in a fight. You know what will help that? A hat. If we all got Orlando magic hats. No hat. Stop talking about the hat. We're so happy you could all join us for dinner. Believe me, I, I know how it feels to be new in the neighborhood. I love your pants. Are they comfortable? Or is it tough to have that fabric pressed right up against your... <clears throat> Um, so, uh, how, how long have you been married? <laughs> Four months. I used to be his dental hygienist, but I wound up cleaning more than his teeth. I mean, maybe my triangle is more sensitive because three people came out of it. Uh, are you sure Grandma Wong didn't want to join us for dinner? Oh, uh, <laughs> no, uh, her favorite TV show is on and she didn't want to miss it. Interior Wong living room. Grandma sits in front of the TV, munching on combos, watching a woman sell clothing on QVC. Sparkle like the diva you are in this cape style pullover top. Grandma laughs hard, as if this were a hilarious joke. Interior, Marvin and Honey House. Back to scene. Honey sets a bowl of gray mush and a bowl of orange crap on the table. Eddie and Jessica whisper to each other. What's that? No idea, just smile, smile. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, we're uh, excited to be here and uh, for the future of Cattleman's Ranch. Do you know Mitch by any chance? White fella? Uh, white face and arms and hands and body. Marvin spreads the gray stuff on a piece of bread. The boys watch him intently as if he's studying an animal in the wild, but afraid not, sorry. Eddie starts spreading gray stuff on a piece of bread. He winks at Honey, takes a bite and starts gagging. He jumps up from the table and spits it out. Eddie! Oh, what is that? It's tuna fish and that's mac and cheese. Eddie aggressively wipes his tongue with his napkin as Evan shovels spoonfuls of mac and cheese into his mouth. Mm, this is really good. Interior, Wong Kitchen, next morning. Eddie and Emery are finishing breakfast. Jessica enters, carrying a sick tray, towels, and Gatorade. Well, Evan's not going to school today. Apparently, he is lactose intolerant. His body is rejecting white culture, which I'm kind of proud of. Good job, Evan. She hands them Tupperware container and lunches again. Mom, no, I don't want Chinese lunch. I want white people food. You had white people food last night and almost threw up. The kids at school will get used to it. Eddie stomps out. We hear Evan groaning off screen. <sighs> I wish my sister lived here so we could smoke. Exterior, cul-de-sac, continuous. The boys walk towards the bus stop. Eddie tosses his lunch in a neighbor's trash can. What are you doing? You're not going to have any lunch to eat. I'll be fine. Kids don't tease you about your lunch? No, not yet. They will. People here suck. Totally. They walk past a kid who waves. Hey, Emery. Hey, what's up? Another kid, George, calls at them from the bus stop. Hey, Emery, coming to my birthday party next weekend? Hey, George, I'll be there. They arrive at the bus stop to find a smiling Kim waiting. Hey, boo, got you a soda. She hands Emery a 7-Up, and he just stares at his brother. I hate your guts. Want to come as my plus one to George's birthday party? Kim is a dance tournament in New Orleans. Interior Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse. Day. A smiling Lewis enters to find Mitch working the host stand. Mitch, hey, how's the lunch uh, crowd? Huh. It's the same. I think we have to give it time, you know, for the word to spread. No, I moved my whole family here for this. I need your Caucasian features to work now. My wife is not a patient woman. She is on my jock. Yeah, I hear you. My mom is the worst roommate. It's like if we're making toast, make both of us toast, you know? There's two slots. Are you sure there's not another reason people aren't coming? Like, maybe the food? No, the food is per- it's not the food. The food is perfect. He looks towards the kitchen. 
Hector wears an undershirt and whatever tattoo he has across his chest is completely blurred out. Hector gives another genuinely enthusiastic thumbs up. Interior, Wong dining room, night. The Wongs minus Emery eat dinner. Evan is pale and has only saltines in front of him. Grandma is in the other room watching QVC. Eddie shovels food in his mouth. I talked to my sister today, my brother. It's not new. There's no way that car is new. Lewis gets distracted by the TV grandma's watching in the next room. It's a local TV show uh, with a guy walking on stilts through a car dealership. Where's Emery? He's having dinner at his girlfriend's house. She's Irish. <laughs> he gets that from me. I once kissed a girl who auditioned for Riverdance. Eddie, why are you eating so much? I I'm hungry. I, I can't even look at that. Didn't you eat your lunch today? Yeah, but I'm still hungry. Oh, okay. Well, how you like the Shaolong Bao I packed? It was really good. Liar! I didn't pack Shaolong Bao! Okay, fine. I threw my lunch away. Oh, I, I mean, can't come believe on. That's so wasteful, man. How do I make you love my food? I need white people lunch. That gets me a seat at the table. And then you get a chance to change the rules. Represent, like Nas says. I'm not trying to eat with a janitor forever. I got big plans. First, get a seat at the table. Second, meet Shaq. Third, change the game. Possibly, possibly with the help of Shaq. Damn it, that was beautiful. You hit me in my heart, boy. <laughs> <sighs> okay, what's white people lunch? Exterior, grocery store, food for all, night. It's huge, glowing in the darkness, all fluorescent lights and music. Jessica and Eddie stand outside the entrance. What is this store so excited about? This is where Lunchables live, Mom. Shot from behind, they look like two humans about to enter the spaceship from Close Encounters. If we get separated, yell rape, and I'll find you. End of Act 2. Act 3. Interior. Food for all grocery store. Minutes later. Rows and rows of food. Jessica and Eddie cautiously enter. Whoa. This is not how I like to shop. This place looks like a hospital. Oh, I miss the Taiwanese markets in D.C. They make me feel so calm. Interior Taiwanese market. Flashback. People are packed in the tiny store like sardines, unable to move, screaming in Chinese. Jessica stands in the middle of it, a serene look on her face. Interior food for all grocery store. Back to scene. Jessica and Eddie continue to walk down a spacious aisle. This air conditioning is nice, though. A store employee appears out of nowhere with a sample tray. <laughs> Try our new almond milk? No! Why are you so friendly, Orlando? Another store employee pops up holding cheese cubes. Goot, the uh, goat gouda sample? Back off, man! They see Lunchables, as far as the eye can see. Wow, everything fits perfectly inside the box. Awesome. You want to fit in a box. That's so American. Why are you so American? Yet another store employee pops up. Fiesta's tortilla chip? Free sample. No! This is free? All these are free? Oh, where's the almond milk lady? You guys need a sign. She takes the whole bowl and pours it in her purse. Interior, Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, next morning. A commercial shoot is setting up. Lewis walks through. How you doing? Everything all right? <laughs> you good, Nancy? Can I have Saturday off? I play in a racquetball league. Nope. Hey, Joe, uh, no margaritas until after the shoot, okay? <laughs> okay. He approaches Mitch, who's dressed in an old-timey cowboy outfit, reading over some script pages. Hey, Mr. Cattleman. How are you feeling? All ready to go? Uh, not at all. I feel 0% comfortable saying any of these words or doing any of this. What is all this, Lewis? Oh, God. Uh... Mitch scurries off as Jessica walks up, clocking all the equipment, crew, etc. Uh, we are, uh, shooting a commercial. <laughs> a commercial? Why didn't you tell me? How much is this costing us? Well, you have to spend money to make money. I hate it here! I hate Orlando! But it's Orlando. I like that they give away food at the grocery store, but that's it. I miss our family and friends in Washington, D.C. I don't understand these rolling women. And Eddie's having a hard time at school. And Evan is lactose intolerant. And Emery, well, Emery's doing surprisingly well. But all you care about is this stupid restaurant, which you said was doing well, but it's not. And I'm worried about money. And look at my hair. My hair is terrible. Oh, yes, your hair is terrible. 
So was mine, but I fixed it with product. Jessica takes his hand in hers. I love that you have big dreams. But I don't want to lose everything, Lewis. Let's just go home. We can talk to the bank, get out of the restaurant lease, get our old apartment back. My sister says it hasn't been rented yet. No, we can't do that. Why? What's so important that we had to move here and change our whole life? Nancy approaches. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Wong, but the bro is ready for blocking. Reveal a donkey standing there with its handler. We'll discuss this later. Lewis walks off. Jessica points to the donkey. How much did she cost? Interior, middle school, cafeteria, lunch. Eddie swaggers in, carrying his pizza lunchables. Oh, cool. You got turkey and cheese? I got pizza. He walks up to a microwave on a table and gets in line. We see probably Brock and his friends nearby in a different line for lunch, school lunch. When, out of nowhere, Walter walks up and cuts in line in front of Eddie. Yo, dude, what are you doing? Get used to it. You're the bottom of the social ladder now. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Chinks get to the back. We see probably Brock and his friends react. The cafeteria gets quiet. Close on Eddie's face. Wu-Tang Clan's Protect Your Neck starts to play as we cut to a, mon a montage of moments from the pilot that we've that's pissed him off. The teasing, the teacher butchering his name, gagging on the tuna fish, his shitty dinosaur t-shirt, and something goes off in Eddie. He grabs Walter's hall monitor pass, still around his neck, shoves the plastic part in the microwave, slams the door shut, and turns it on. My official badge! Still attached to the lanyard, Walter watches his pass melt into obscurity through the microwave window. Eddie grabs a bowl of pudding and shoves it in Walter's face. Eat your pudding, bitch! Interior hallway, outside principal's office. Eddie sits on a bench, head down. Emery and Evan sit on another bench, staring at him. Through the closed door of the principal's office, we and they can hear everything. Then, after melting Walter's badge, which is school's property, uh, he shoved dessert in his face and yelled out a cuss word, a bad one. This is very serious offense, Mr. and Mrs. Wong. Yes, it is. We are very upset. Eddie listens, br bracing himself. That you didn't do anything to defend Eddie. Excuse me? That boy called our son a chink, and you think that's okay? What are you going to do about that? How come only Eddie's out there? How come that boy isn't in here too? Why aren't his parents here? Or his 40-year-old best friend. And why aren't we talking about the fact that he has a 40-year-old best friend? School's fine with that? I don't think you understand. We're, we're talking about potential uh, suspension. If you suspend our son over this, we will sue you all over in everyone in this place. So fast it'll make your head spin. Hey, it's the American way, right? Exterior, middle school, parking lot, minutes later. The Wong family walks towards the parking lot. Did you really melt a kid's badge? And shove dessert in his face? And call him a bee? Eddie ignores them, looking up at his parents, still stunned. I don't... Why do you... You're my son. We're family. We might get mad sometimes, but we always have each other's back. You do your best not to make waves. But I'll never be mad at you for standing up for yourself, Eddie. This is why. This is why what? Why we moved here. I'm sorry Eddie had to go through this, but it's going to make him stronger. Coming to this new place is going to make us all stronger. When you leave what you know behind, that's when you find out what you're capable of. I came down here and opened a Wild West restaurant because this is the Wild West. There, there is opportunity here to have a better life for our family. I don't want to work for your brother forever. I do have big dreams. I got big plans. Things are okay for things were okay for us back in DC, but I want more than okay for us. You're just trying to get the nut, Dad. I want more than okay for us too. I'm with you. Not for me, also. She takes his hand. They share a moment. Then Oscar Chow is not gay. Oscar Chow cut your bangs. What's his hobby? Eddie's watching probably Brock and his buddies approach in the parking lot. They see Eddie and stop tense. Then probably Brock and his buddies walk far around Eddie and his family, giving them a wide berth. Yeah, son, a little bit of respect. 
The Wong family continues to walk towards their car. Big Papa starts playing again as we dissolve to interior, Eddie's bedroom, day. Eddie walks into his room and his eyes widen. On his bed is the brand new Orlando Magic baseball cap he wanted. Interior, Wong kitchen, continuous. Jessica dries dishes as Eddie runs in, holding his new cap. Mom, thank you, it's super dope. What are you talking about? You got me the Orlando Magic cap. It wasn't me, I didn't buy it. Got it, uh, wasn't me, oh, sorry. A beat, then Eddie smiles and nods in understanding. Got it, wasn't you, because if it was you, you'll have to get Emery and Evan hats too. Gotcha. He winks at her and strolls off, past Grandma watching QVC and an infomercial advertising sports gear. Well, look who got a credit card. Grandma holds up a Visa card and kisses it. End of Act 3. Interior, Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, day. Mitch, dressed as Mr. Cattleman, sits at a table. He has red makeup on his neck. Hey, y'all. When my neck gets red from my white skin being in the yellow sun all day, I like to stop by Cattleman's Ranch, where I can be comfortable among my own kind. He walks to a table where over-the-top country girls sit. Maybe meet my wife, or my cousin, or my cousin wife, for an onion blossom for only $2.99. So, come on down, and tell him Cattleman Mitch and his pal, Eric the Donkey, sent ya. Widen to reveal a donkey in a cowboy hat next to him. Hey, take it easy, Eric. Save room for a bottomless cup of coffee with purchase of any dessert after 9 p.m. Pull out to reveal the Wong family watching this on their TV in the living room. Grandma is laughing hard. I thought the donkey was good. Dad, I love you, but that sucked. Mom, Eddie said, uh, shut up, Evan. Wrong, Evan. What's a cousin wife? Maybe the food is the problem. I don't know. End of show. Yay, so many memories. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus. This is so sad, but it's so uh, good. It's amazing. Awesome. Miss you guys. Yeah. Miss you too. Miss all you guys. Um, now what do we do? <laughs> now we just. Uh, I think we uh, go. We say bye. We go. Bye. bye. Fresh up the bus. Come and get out now where I come from. I know where I go. I'm Yo. What's up, man? Dude, your your um video game squad is blowing up the YouTube they comments really are. right now. They really are. It's, it's kind of crazy. Tell me the story. Tell me the story. Who are these people that you run with that are um that mm. are that are so adamant on trolling you right now? Oh, so um I don't know if you knew this, but I started streaming on Twitch a little bit ago. And these are the people oh, who just okay, okay. who watched every time, right? So these are like I made a Discord and we just talked a lot and we, 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 we became pretty close. And so now they know mm -hmm. all these secrets about me that a lot of people don't know about. Big mistake on my Yeah, mind. who do you have a crush on? I think I was know uh, we don't we don't we, we shouldn't talk about that in front of Are you sure? People. I feel like we should people. talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. like it's kind of I, important that maybe see, well, the thing okay, is, look. They, the person found out and it didn't go down the way that I'd hoped it went down. So it, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, hey, yeah. say no more, stay no more. Yeah, and um, you know, you just got to get back on that horse. Son. Yes, if, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, as it says, if you don't mingle, you stay single, so. If you don't mingle, you stay single. <laughs> Words of wisdom are right there. Wisdom, Listen, yeah. um, um, you know, this, this is a bit of a funny time for us to be, for us to be meeting up and 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 doing the stream and and it's you know great that we're here it's great to see you guys and and to be able to share in some laughs but um yeah. you know obviously we we should speak about what's happening right now what do you i think? mean yeah there's a lot going on right now it's really difficult for a lot of people i mean mm -hmm. i did yeah i think before we start with the next table read it's good to take a moment to speak in solidarity with the uh black community a little bit that's right the uh the recent killings of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd in the U.S., as well as Regis Korchinski, uh, Paquette in Toronto, have prompted enormous grief and rage across both of our nations. I mean, I think also, especially with Fresh of the Boat, which, you know, has a lot of fans in the Black community and has a lot of, had a lot of support from the Black community, and really wouldn't be the same show without, you know, the Black culture and a lot of that. We want to stand, mm -hmm. say that we stand together with the Black community, like, full, fully, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. 
even as Asian North Americans have faced bias and, and, and harassment in this time of COVID-19, and I'm sure you've been no stranger to that, Hudson, you've seen it all over the internet, maybe even experienced it yourself, um, you know, we're also seeing the continued oppression of Black North Americans. So you and I have both been very outspoken about issues as they pertain to our community, the Asian community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think to our audience, we just, we, we do want to say thank you so much for listening and for hanging with us. But as allies, I think we also feel that it's our duty to amplify the voices of a community that has experienced racism on such a systemic level. And to also, as individuals, commit to taking the time to look inwardly and reflecting on ourselves. Right. I mean, Black Lives Matter. We hear you. We see you. And I want to urge everyone who is watching this here with us, you know, just we all want to support. Like, yeah. So have everyone here to support. And yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Whew. Um, I know that's I know that's a touch uh, yeah. heavy for um, for what this is, but but mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for thank you for listening and thanks for thanks for going through that with me, Hudson. Yeah. Um, what are you what are you up to these days? What's what's quarantine like? I mean, not a lot Other to get up to. Streaming? How many? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can't really go anywhere. I mean, I, I know just as you have, I've been doing my best to work out as much as I can. You're looking crazy. Um, I asked you for some advice earlier too, been taking it very seriously. Um, besides that, <laughs> playing a lot of video games. Um, yeah. Video games. Yeah. Is it, is it just apex or what, what's going on? Are you playing, are you playing COD Warzone? Playing, are you playing, playing animal yeah. crossing? Cause that's what, I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> what I'm super into right now. I've seen a lot of your stories. I just got animal crossing. <laughs> haven't loaded it up. Haven't even started yet, but I'm going to, I'm gonna get down that grind. But yeah. Playing all right. Hey, let me know. Let me know if you ever want to come over to my Island. All right. I'll hook you yeah. up. I'll give you, I'll give you fruits. <laughs> I'll give you turnips, even though my turnips never sell for anything more than right. like, you know, 90. But hey, I don't know any, any items. I, I don't know you. any of that means, but when I figure that out, I'll let you know. <laughs> you will, sign. Yeah. You will. Yes. yes. Um, how tall are you nowadays? Are you? Is there any more growing that's happening? Or are you still six foot a million? Yeah, I'm, I'm still six foot a million. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, when I first met Hudson, uh, it was I was visiting Jeff on the set of Fresh Off the Boat, and he was like he was like up to my shoulder, and I was like, ah, oh, this kid's cute. He's cool. <laughs> Literally, the next time I saw him. I was actually staying over at, at Jeff's house, and then I like I like go out <laughs> yeah. into the living room, and Hudson, six foot one, Hudson is like, "Hey, what's up?" And his voice is like completely different too. And I'm like, "Is this? Are you? Oh my god!" <laughs> it was weird, man. It was weird. And then you know, the next time I saw you was probably on the basketball court when you were playing at the uh, at the CCYA Celebrity Classic in Toronto last year. And then you were just like a Jeremy Lin. I was just, you know, I was like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I was not difference. as good as basketball, but I was tall. That's all I really had. But. <laughs> <laughs>